Wow. Welcome to everybody. Tonight we wanted to offer you a small preview of holiday music as performed by Ch Prelude Children's Choir with singers grades three to five. And Prelude is one of our two youth choirs which is underwritten by the chorale. So this is Prelude's very first public appearance. Would you give them a big hand? So they are going to share selections with you from their upcoming winter concert with the Minneapolis Youth Chorus, which will be presented on December 11th at Justice Page Middle School in their auditorium. As their conductor, Nicole Lambrecht, is currently leading a concert at Bethel University, I am honored to lead the choir in five holiday selections with text and soloists shared in your program. So if you want to take your program out, you can follow along with the texts. I want to share and uh, also that it is a privilege to stand in front of these singers, many of whom are in this choir for the first time. If this is your first year in Prelude, raise your hand. Wow. So I want to thank the members of Prelude for sharing their love of singing with all of us and also acknowledge their families in making tonight's concert possible and also Patrice Arisam, who has been assisting me, our Director Emerita. So our first selection is one verse of Deck the Halls. Our second piece is Winter Lights by Audrey Snyder. And what's really great is these, some of these pieces have a lot of text, and I've had fun learning those texts uh, to do this concert. And sometimes, I'm not quite sure, but they're so certain of their text, they will lead the way. Winter Lights.
So our next piece features three soloists, and they are going to introduce themselves. I'm Ren Hatling. I'm Camila Ivanis Brown. I'm Nora Olin. And our song is A la Media Noche, which means at the hour of midnight. This is their very first public appearance. Would you? They're doing a great job. So our next number is called Spring Fever in December. And Caleb, where are you, Caleb? Come on down. <laughs> Say your name. My name is Caleb Vincent Canole. And Caleb is going to be leading the movement for spring fever in December.
You like that one, right? <laughs> took me a while to learn those words. <laughs> so now we're going to our final piece, which is Silent Night, one verse. I want to thank Deb, our accompanist, so much. She's been great in helping us guide our way through this. Thank you, Deb. And thank you to all these amazing singers. December 11th concert. You did a fantastic job. I am going to ask parents who are staying for the sing-along with their children to meet them in the chapel now. So all of our prelude choir will go to the chapel and meet their parents. And if you're leaving, thank you so much for coming and bringing your wonderful singers. And if you're staying, enjoy the sing-along. We will start in about five minutes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lynn Trapp, and I am proud to be your orchestra. So indeed, this is the 14th, if you're counting, annual Messiah Sing with Minnesota Chorale. Minnesota Chorale is truly one of the most wonderful choral organizations in the land of choral life. From children to adults to style and rep and community engagement, it's not like this anywhere. Congratulations, everybody. <clears throat> their, gift, their gift to culture is really immense. Congrats to the Minnesota Chorale leadership, including Kathy Romy, the artistic director, and others who joined me many years ago in creating this event when I served as director of worship and music here for 20 years. Uh, I'd like to just take a moment to recognize a very special uh, person in the history of St. Olaf who was supposed to be sitting right there tonight, but like so many other Minnesotans, got a cold and couldn't be here this evening. Um, he planned to be with us, as I said, and during the first chapter of my work here, Father John Forlitti was pastor, and he and I had the opportunity to work together with plenty of great staff people. He supported this sanctuary renovation, which included this magnificent pipe organ. I inaugurated it in a concert in 2002. We opened many new doors here to welcome great events like this. And through the years, it has been celebrated with large orchestra, with chamber ensembles, great choirs, international organists, and dramatic presentations. And so we thank you, Father John. He's watching a live stream right now for that great gift and for supporting us there in the early 2000s. And thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And may this event last forever and ever, forever <laughs> and now. I introduce our great colleague, friend, artistic conductor, and educator, and recent recipient of the F. Melius Christiansen Choral Award, very prestigious, Kathy Romy.
Well, Lynn took the words right out of my mouth. Welcome to our 14th Messiah Sing. On behalf of the Minnesota Chorale, let me say how pleased we are to again partner with St. Olaf Catholic Church and Director Emerita, Emeritus and guest organist Lynn Trapp, who brings this work to life on the magnificent instrument behind me. So first question, how many of you are here for the first time? Would you stand up? Stand up, we wanna see you. Oh! All right, how many of you have attended the Messiah Sing at least three times? Stand up. All right, last question, it's a tough one. How many have been at all 14 of our performances? Stand up. But who's counting? Right? So this is a collaboration I look forward to every year and something we love to share with the community. For those who have attended in the past years, you know that before we begin our performance, it's a tradition for me to say a few words about the origins of this beloved work. Many of you may remember that Messiah was first performed as a charity concert in Dublin, not in December, but on April 13, 1742. The composer George Friedrich Handel, of German descent, had spent the majority of his career in England, and he was initially famous for many Italian operas. And when those went out of style, he began to write religious oratorios, which may de be defined as sacred operas or unstaged dramatic works on a religious story. In his writing of Messiah, Handel once remarked, I did think, I did see all heaven before me and the great God himself. Likewise, the public reception following an open rehearsal of Messiah was equally touched and moved and it was described in the Dublin newsletter as far surpassing anything of that nature which has been performed in this or any other kingdom. Messiah was, just, was composed in just 24 days. So look at, look at your score and think 24 days to write this work during the summer of 1741. The texts were drawn from the Old and New Testaments compiled by a gentleman literary scholar of the times Charles Jennings. The libretto is not a traditional narrative of Christ's life, but rather, as musicologist Jens Peter Larson explained, a representation of the fulfillment of redemption through the Redeemer Messiah. So now, if you'd open your score to the table of contents, give me a moment, You will see that the work is organized in three large sections. For our Handel scholars in the audience, you may remember that part one is divided into five scenes, each containing solo movements and ending with a larger chorus. So the first scene focuses on the theme of prophecy and salvation, and it ends with the chorus and the glory of the Lord. The second scene is on the coming and the purifying Messiah, concluding with the chorus, and he shall purify. The third scene discusses the virgin birth and ends with, for unto us a child is born. Our fourth scene depicts the narrative of the angels and shepherds from the Christmas story and is summarized in glory to God. And the final and fifth scene reflects on Christ's work and miracles on earth and ends with the chorus, his yoke is easy which also anticipates the narrative of the oratorio's second section. Tonight, you will sing all five choruses from part one. Part two is organized into seven scenes and narrates the passion story of Christ, concluding with God's triumph in the Hallelujah Chorus. And part three is organized into four scenes and chronicles the promise of redemption, resurrection, and the glorification of the Messiah you will sing 11 of the 16 choruses from parts two and three, making you a Messiah pro by the end of tonight. <laughs> One year after Handel's successful premiere of Messiah in Dublin, he presented the work in London. 
Unfortunately, it was not well received, partly because of the biblical text, but also because there were no clear characters or storyline, and frankly, there were just too many choruses. <laughs> the work did not become widely accepted until Handel himself began presenting it as an annual charity concert for the Foundling Hospital. During his lifetime, he conducted or supervised 36 performances of Messiah. 18th century music historian Charles Burney wrote that Handel's Messiah fed the hungry, clothed the naked, fostered the orphan, and enriched succeeding managers of oratorios more than any single musical production in this or any country. Tonight we've come together to again experience these glorious choruses written 282 years ago. The choir of Minnesota Chorale Singers behind me, joined by additional chorale singers seated among you, will help lead our performance, shaping the music much as you would experience it in a concert setting. I will conduct the choruses facing you and encourage you to enter into the spirit of each movement's unique character. In terms of concert logistics, I share my annual warning that we have many different editions of Handel's Messiah represented in tonight's audience. These editions contain variations in the numbering of the movements, text, rhythms, and occasional notes. I encourage you not to worry about these brief anom anomalies which may occur around you. And every year I just say, enjoy the moment and remain confident that we will begin and hopefully end together. <laughs> I'm grateful to our soloists who are all members of the Minnesota Chorale and especially to Laura Horner who graciously stepped in yesterday for mezzo-soprano Deborah Gilroy. Each soloist will step out of the front chorus to sing their aria similar to what would have been done in Handel's own time. Most of the solo movements have been shortened to allow you the opportunity to sing as many choruses as possible. So for this reason, I recommend you always turn to the next chorus indicated in your program. In part three, there are also two movements which begin with the front chorus alone. The first is Since by Man Came Death, which follows the Hallelujah Chorus, and the second is the final Amen. Both are introduced with reflective opening statements by our front chorus and are followed by joyous responses from all of you. As we also have guests who are here to listen, I ask that you remain seated while you sing. To help prepare you for each movement, the onstage chorus will stand in advance. But let's agree that you will only stand for the Hallelujah Chorus and the final movement, Worthy is the Lamb. In closing, I want to welcome everyone joining us via live stream and thank all of you who pre-registered for tonight's concert. I loved reading your comments about what brings you to our Messiah Sing, and I'm very grateful to those who made a donation to support our work or sponsor a specific aspect of tonight's performance. We appreciate contributions of any amount which can still be made online or placed in the provided baskets by the ushers after the concert before you return your borrowed scores. <laughs> That's a little reminder. We want to dedicate tonight's concert to the memory of Minnesota Chorale member Amara Strandi, who sang the Messiah with us last year sitting right over in that pew and died this past April of cancer, just two days before her 21st birthday. Amara was a powerful force in the passage of Minnesota legislation, banning many products containing PFAS chemicals, and was supported by her wonderful family who are with us this evening. Michael and Dana, we are so glad that you are here, and your parents, and to everyone assembled here who lost loved ones over the past year, we offer you this gift of song, community, and comfort as we remember and honor the lives of those we hold dear. Finally, I've been asked to offer some final quotes on Handel from his contemporaries and colleagues that followed him. Johann Sebastian Bach is attributed to saying, Handel is the only person I would wish to see before I die, and the only person I would wish to be were I not Bach. When Mozart heard about this, he is said to have exclaimed, truly, I would say the same myself if I were permitted to put in a word. 
After hearing the Hallelujah Chorus, Yosef Haydn is said to have wept like a child and exclaimed, Handel is the master of us all. And Beethoven is said to have shared, Handel is the greatest composer that ever lived. I would uncover my head and kneel down on his tomb. And Horace Walpole, and you say, who is that? That was the fourth Earl of Oxford and British writer and music historian of the time wrote that Handel's oratorios thrive abundantly. He said, for my part, they give me an idea of heaven where everybody is to sing whether they have voices or not. So thank you to all of you who are sharing your voice with us tonight and to those schools and churches who provided scores for our audience choristers. On behalf of the staff of Minnesota Chorale and St. Ove Catholic Church, we wish you a glorious evening of singing and community. And we hope to greet you afterwards at a reception in the Four Lady Gathering Room right across the hall, featuring a wide array of holiday cookies and a special Messiah Sing photo opportunity. And now, Handel's Messiah.
So before we get started, I want to just share a few of the comments that were submitted prior to the concert. So one, this is Marty. She said she wanted to attend a Messiah sing-along uh, on her first holiday season back in Minnesota after many years away. So she Googled Messiah sing-along and near me, and voila, here she is and her family tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica, growing up, I attended sing-ins and my parents helped me organize them. My sons have now taken an interest in choral music, so a quick Google search and two-hour drive, and here we are. <laughs> And Julie, I'm not a singer, but I like the surround sound. My sister is a soloist, Jennifer Sylvester. I used to get annoyed by her singing when she was, <laughs> when she was a toddler. But here's Julie, thank you so much for being here. So we will have a chance to acknowledge all of our soloists at the end of the concert. I want you to know that I didn't forget them. And so now we're going to start with part two, and then we'll stand for the Hallelujah Chorus, give you just a moment to kind of reset, and then we'll do part three. <laughs> 